Yes, there's some content for this out there in the world. Um, so I will continue. Um, so today, today's conversation is a pretty big one, pretty mighty one. Um, and that is how to survive being disfellowshipped. Um, there are a lot of things um, that we need to discuss. There's a couple of pr uh, prerequisites, if, if, you, if you were to call it that, um, about disfellowshipping. So why don't we dive right in? Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is, um, again, for some people that may have just, this may be your first video, this may be your first um, uh, Googling or searching about disfellowshipping. So just to go over that again, disfellowshipping in the Jehovah's Witness organization is pretty much you have to commit an action um, that you're found to be unrepentant. Um, and so most of the times, for example, just a quick example is a lot of times why I was disfellowshipped, why a lot of young people are disfellowshipped is uh, in the early years of your youth, a lot of times you have sex and you continue to have sex. And when you're found out or you go to the brothers, um, and when I say brothers, for those that are not in the know, disfellowshipping is a, um, uh, there's a judicial committee formed. Three men, doesn't matter if you're a woman or not, it's three men that sit and talk about what you've done, if you, or if they feel that you're repentant about it. And if you're not repentant of, of whatever you did, most likely then comes the disfellowshipping. Um, and disfellowshipping is when you're basically cut off from the communications of any J baptized Jehovah's Witness. Um, so that could include your family, could include your, you know, close friends, right? So if you're disfellowshipped, it's almost like an instantaneous cutting off, right? You're announced at a meeting and somebody was able to talk to you before the meeting and then now um, they're not. Um, and that goes on as long as you are deemed a disfellowship person. Um, so um, in my previous uh, videos, we talked about some of the different stages up until disfellowshipping. Um, but now this, this video is strictly about um, for those that are disfellowshipped, how do you survive and some of you guys may be researching this or, you know, it may be coming to you. <laughs> Maybe you've done something that causes or that would cause you to get this fellowship. So I would definitely pay attention to that, too. And, um, you know, I do apologize. This is my second retake, technically third retake, um, because I had some audio issues with my previous video. So I do apologize for deleting that. And this is the new re-uploading about that. Uh, but I think I'm a little bit more organized with what I was saying. Um, so hopefully this resonates with some of you guys. Um, so I just want to get that little bit of stuff out the way first. Um, and so we'll jump right into it. Um, one of the things that I would say is that there are prerequisites to becoming disfellowshipped. Those are you must be a baptized member of the organization. So f for people that, and again, I may be a little uh, uh, misty on some of the technical terms, but from what I remember, there was different levels of uh, a publisher was what you're called. A publisher is someone in the congregation that um, could go door to door and speak, but they may not be baptized yet. There's an unbaptized publisher, publisher, um, and I think that there's something else. I can't remember what the other one is called, but you have to be a baptized member first. Um, and you have to be found to be unrepentant of whatever you did. Now, I know that there's some other circumstances that could be deemed um, disfellowshipping, I think, without um, unrepentant uh, feeling or not. Um, and then age doesn't matter. So this is one of the things that definitely um, I'm going to talk about um, as far as how this affects young folks and then as adults how it affects you also um most of the joe's witnesses when i was growing up we were kind of groomed to be baptized early but i'll get to that in a little bit um so yeah those are the prerequisites um and then the big question is what can you do to not be disfellowshipped uh, in the first place so i know this may sound funny but uh, never become a Jehovah's Witness would be number one, obviously. 
um, or never get baptized. Um, these are the only two that I can think of that would stop you from being disfellowshipped. Um, and I know that may not sound great <laughs> for those that are in the religion, but I think for those in the religion, we kind of know the answer to that. Um, but for those that are new and, and listening, those are the only ways. So if you're studying and you're trying to learn about the religion, especially this topic, uh, I would definitely be paying attention um, because um, you'll see how these how this affects a lot of people older, younger um, that have made the decision to get baptized or, tr you know, associate with Jehovah's Witnesses. Right. So um, as always, this is not a bashing campaign. Um, you know, these are my personal experiences. These are how I feel. Um, I do feel that there's um, a few good things um, about the religion. Um, I think I may make a video about that, right? I don't think that I have um, a disgusting taste in my mouth about Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, you know, I still respect the religion, right? So my aunt is in the religion. My daughter's in the religion. And so I definitely have a respect for the religion. So I also want to make that known also. Um, so after I discussed about how can you not be disfellowshipped, um, what I alluded to earlier was about getting baptized as a young person. Um, in my growing up in the 90s, I'm going to date myself there, in the 90s, um, usually it was looked favorably upon witness parents if their child was baptized early. Um, you know, if you got baptized at 10, you were like uh, put on a pedestal, like, oh, my God, you know, uh, this per you know, your child is, you know, still in school and, you know, he's taking the next step to get baptized, blah, blah, blah. Um, to me, that's that was always it always weirded me out. Um, but then again, you know, as a young person, you always feel pressured uh, from the congregation, from the brothers, especially the men, uh, because we had a lot of uh, responsibilities in the congregation. So for us, it was, uh, you know, it was pressure to get baptized early um and for me you know i won't go down a rabbit hole with this <laughs> but um getting baptized at such a young age i got baptized when i was 14 and so for me you know you're not able to make rash adult decisions at that age right especially for how this fellowshipping affects you as an adult in your later years, or even if you're 18 or, you know, you just turned 18 or not, right. You're making a choice that can affect you for the rest of your life, which again, you got to be 18 to vote, 21 to drink, et cetera, et cetera. So this is one, you know, after me being out of the religion, this is something that I always go back to about, um, being that accountable, f um, at that young age for the things that, um, you know, were to take place, right? Um, so, again, that is a number one aspect of, especially a born in Jehovah's Witness, is if you're born into the religion, a lot of times we're pressured to get baptized young. Um, and it's like if you're 18 and not baptized after you are in the religion, you know, born into religion, you're like, well, well there goes 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Why is Chaz not getting, you know, why is Chaz not baptized yet? He's 18, right? And then that's when everybody starts panicking. Um, <laughs> I know it sounds crazy for people that are not used to this kind of talk, but that is something that uh, uh, does happen. Now, you know, I know in other religions, babies get baptized or uh, children get baptized as babies. I still have a problem with that, too. But right now, we're talking about Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> um, so I'll move on from my little sticking point right there. Um, so the question, like I said, on everybody's mind is how do you survive being disfellowshipped, right? Um, I don't like to waste any time, and I want to get right into this, right? Because for a lot of people, this is causing them great mental anguish. This is causing a rift in families. This is causing just a whole bunch of problems amongst uh people that associate with Jehovah's Witnesses, right? So um, my number one thing to survive being disfellowshipped is you need a support system. 
um, I'll break it down the way that I break it down. And there's going to be two things. Uh, there's going to be one item that I say twice, and that's for good measure. Um, so pay attention to that. Um, one thing in the support system is you're going to need family support. Now, this is taken in consideration. If all your family is not in the organization, then you have non Jehovah's Witnesses um, that are in your family that you can rely on. Um, now, this is a general statement. I don't know how everyone's family is. If you get along with them, if there is any kind of um, communication. Now, a lot of times, to be honest, um, Joe's Witness families um, that have other non-believing family members uh, because of how the Joe's Witnesses are, they sometimes cause a rift just for that simple fact alone. Um, so I'm hoping that you do have other family that you can rely on, um, which would be my first um, first comment about the support system. Family first. I always believe in family first. Um, second option is friends. Again, you're told not to have worldly friends or friends outside their organization, but I think that we can at least come up with one person um, that would be someone that you can maybe pal up with, right? You need somebody, you need an outlet to basically be able to talk to someone that is not a Jehovah's Witness, no judgment and all of that. Um, how to get friends, because again, I think this is something else that we struggle with because we're so used to being, um, um, I don't want to say forced to be with Jehovah's Witnesses, but again, it's beaten into us that you must not associate with others outside of the religion. Sorry, I had to crack my neck there. Um, so the safest place that I would say is not on dating apps or any kind of crazy apps, right? There's too many crazy people on there, but um, the easiest way to get friends if you if you need somebody that's not a Joe's witness is probably look at your, your work. I'm pretty sure you have some kind of work buddies or work associates that you can probably um, start to get a little bit more closer with and, you know, hang out. Um, so that is the main part of the support system. Now, this is this, the second, the third item I was going, I have separately because it's so important. The third item I would say is a therapist. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because of how heavy of a load that this becomes on a person where um, some people, you're either not going to have family to talk to, you're not going to have friends, right? And who else are you going to lean on, right? Now, if your circumstances allow um, and you are feeling uh, a little mentally unbalanced, then a therapist um, is definitely a place or a person I would definitely highly suggest. Um, I'm pausing because um, some of us have had suicidal thoughts or thoughts of harming ourselves or, you know, we're in a bad place because, again, being stripped of everything that you've known and now being able to not talk to anybody would, I think, affect anybody. Um, and I think I think one thing that I would make sure that everybody knows watching this is that, um, you know, there is no shame in reaching out for help. I think America, I think society um, puts that as a taboo. Um, I know, especially in the min uh, the minority level, you know, I'm African-American, um, you know, going to a therapist is seen as weak. I'm, I'm sure other groups also, but I want to put it out there that it is not weak that you seek help. I would say that you're stronger by acknowledging that you need someone to talk to and to me you being able to reach out to somebody shows that you're strong um so i would definitely say that if you're feeling that you need to talk to somebody and your circumstances allow talk to you know a therapist or you know one of those uh, suicidal hotlines i think is free um so that would be my third uh somewhat part three item for the support system the next thing I highly suggest is um, having a, an active hobby. Uh, not me. Like I, I told you guys before, I work in IT. Um, and so I love building computers. I'm into a lot of gadgets. And that's probably why I started filming, right? I've already had a camera. Um, and, you know, being laid off in November, I've had a lot of time to think about stuff. 
and you know i had this camera laying around so i said you know what it's <laughs> it's been 20 years and i've been going back and forth in my head to start telling my story right um i can think that another person could do the same um and finding a hobby now i would suggest the hobby be something an activity something that involves you uh to physically do something because that's going to keep your mind busy um what i mean by that for example is like something I, i'm a movie buff uh, uh i love scary movies uh and so for me um me just going to a movie theater and watching a movie is not necessarily something that's going to keep me active uh you know my mind can drift uh and think about other stuff something in the movie might come up that i may think about something else so i would definitely suggest finding a hobby that um that keeps you active um i have no idea what to suggest for people because i don't know everybody out there right so but find something if you already have a hobby that you enjoy um i would definitely um um, stick to trying to do something that you enjoy that keeps you active uh the next item i would say of how to survive being disfellowshipped is and i've done this also um do something on your bucket list um i last year i did nothing crazy i went to do wine tasting with my wife and uh our mutual friends and i never have done wine tasting and I never I always wanted to do the little um I know I'm gonna butcher this name the character the little plate with the the cheese and the meat and all that that was always pretty funny to, to uh to participate in so we did that um I went to a drag show uh in New York uh first time for that with my wife and the same mutual friends uh we had well actually no me and my wife went there for my uh, my birthday uh, my friends couldn't make it, but the first time I went to a drag show. So that was pretty fun. Um, you know, something um, that you may have not done as a Jehovah's Witness, something that you wouldn't have done as a Jehovah's Witness. Now, I'm not saying this is not something crazy to go out and do, but, you know, a lot of times you, we are so um, protective of not offending on the congregation I, I i say what comes to mind is the the young term yolo uh you only live once and for the witnesses right that mentality is not there it's you die once right you, you know waiting for armageddon waiting for the paradise to come so we're just waiting to die for paradise and one of the things that happens is you get so focused on the end of the world is coming. There's no point in doing anything special in life that we forget to enjoy life. And I think that is one of my biggest regrets um, as a witness. Um, I started to do that later in life. Like I'm going to tell you now, one of the first things, well, not the first things, but one of the things I did was I got a tattoo. And then I got a couple others. Um, maybe I'll show you guys one day. Um, but you know, simple things like that is something that, um, I would highly suggest anybody participate in because again, you're trying to get your power back. We've lost our power, uh, being a witness and some of the recovery is learning how to slowly regain the power back. Um, and doing something on a bucket list is something that will help you, I think, to, to do that. The other um, thing, as I mentioned, number four, um, I said I was going to go back to this, is a therapist. Um, even though I already mentioned it before, I think that this is very much needed um, for some people, not everyone. Um, so for some people, um, it will help you navigate. Now, obviously, your therapist is most likely not a Jehovah's Witness, <laughs> um, so they won't be able to comment on everything, but the but they will be able to walk you through some feelings and how to address those feelings. So I want to make sure that everyone knows that um, it's not something you should be ashamed of. Um, when I was younger, I talked to a therapist um, when I was 14 to like 16. Um, that's going to be another video. Um, I told you guys before that I have a uh, mentally ill mother. Um, she suffers from schizophrenia and bipolar. So um, I was going through a lot. 
um, at that young age. You know, what's funny, I was going through this right around when I was baptized. Um, so therapist is definitely going to be able to help if your circumstances allow. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, that, sh that, that could help you there. Um, now, whew, that was a lot of info. Um, that was primarily for people that are already disfellowshipped. And I, ha I do have a couple of other comments for those that are not disfellowshipped, either not disfellowshipped yet, not disfellowshipped, or you're just learning about disfellowshipping and, and the like. Um, I've been doing a little bit of research on this um, just to make sure that my facts were somewhat straight. But, um, you know, to survive being disfellowshipped, if you're really scared, like if you're watching this and you've done something bad, or you've done something that you feel that you might get disfellowshipped. This is not a video of, you know, trying to trick the Jehovah's Witness elders and the congregation, right? And living a double life. Um, I, you know, as a kid, right, we always got beat over the head with 1 Corinthians 1533, bad associations, spoilers for habits. Um, and anybody that wasn't, you know, one of our peers or young folks that was doing something that we knew it wasn't right, it was like you, you disassociate yourself, right? Uh, or they're living a double life. That's what we were always told. Oh, you're living a double life. Um, that's not something I would like to support um, because ultimately you're better off out of the religion if you're going to do that. So that's not what these next comments are for. If you are on the fence about not um, being disfellowshipped, um, you should just fade away. I think that's the new term. I'm I'm seeing that on a lot of uh, Joe's Witness videos. You just need to fade. Fade is basically no more going to the meetings, no more association with anybody, and that also means not putting in a letter of disassociation. Uh, because what I've read is that putting in a disasso disassociation letter will lead you to still have your communications and ties severed. So I do not think that that is a safe way to do anything. Now, saying that is that if you do fade away, you still probably will be contacted by the elders or visits. Um, and so you have to handle that how you see fit. Um, so I know a lot of people faded out when COVID hit uh, because everybody had the Zoom meetings and everybody was not paying attention. And a lot of people just stopped, you know, attending. Um, so I know that that does work. Um, and so though that really is the only suggestion that I have, right? Because if you've already done something or you, maybe you didn't do anything, I would still say just fade away. Don't write a letter, just fade away. Um, and the reason if you guys are not understanding that is that if you fade away, you're not tarnished with the whole being shunned. So you may be considered inactive but inactive people can still have relations with baptized members, right? Again, not pushing to leave a double life and doing whatever you want and still mingling with Jehovah's Witnesses just to mingle. But again, the goal of this is to safeguard your mental state because once this happens where you cannot talk to anybody, this is where a lot of people have the problem. So those are the quick tips that I have about um, surviving being disfellowshipped. Um, again, I want anybody to comment on anything that I've said. Um, I always will respond. Uh, I am looking for a job, though. So um, <laughs> between applying for jobs and um, reading comments, I think I'm pretty fast. I always will end up catching up at night. Um, but I will say if, if this has helped you in any way, I'm never the type or I never would be the type to say like and subscribe in the beginning because how do you know that you actually will like anything, right? Um, if you did watch a portion of this video, even if you skipped around, I, I would say, yeah, give it a like and subscribe if you feel the content, you know, is something that you want to watch, right? Um, so with that being said, uh, I definitely want anybody to reach out to me. Uh, if you want to talk, I'm always free to talk. Um, so I will close this video out and see you guys on the next one.